His home is a late reward for a career in the service industry, which began when he was 14. From restaurant manager to running events for the wine industry to launching his own company 17 years ago, his name is a benchmark in weddings, events, and in decor and design too. <laughs> now you're clearly a collector of all things gorgeous and unusual. I am, Mayanda. I've tried so hard to remain minimalist, but it, it doesn't work for me. I cannot walk past a Madonna, and there's no religious Catholic affiliation with all of these. However, if I don't buy it in the shop, I will go back tomorrow and I will go purchase it. And then also art. I'm a collector of art. However, I buy art that speaks to my heart. It's not necessarily a long-term investment decision. There's something particularly special about that painting. That's my favorite. And I don't know, that day I was walking near Manus and there was a market. And from afar, I saw that painting. I drove back seven times and I never understood why it was so dear to me and is so dear to me and my daughter was born Catalina and when she was two years old I literally walked past the painting and I stopped I got a fright and I was like that's me and my daughter and I never knew when I bought it and now still everyone's who painted that of you and Catalina so yes that will probably always be the showstopper for me in my home what is your special go-to area in your home? Definitely the kitchen. I love cooking and funny enough, great business deals happened in that room with the board of directors of the company, even staff meetings. I love saying, let's close office, let's go to my home. His black grand piano is his pride and joy. Vintage chandeliers are a minor obsession and he loves hunting for antiques. Elate prefers decorating smaller spaces, going with his gut feel for what works. So this is the space, my favourite space. Your favourite space in your and house. Check out these chandeliers. I can safely say I've never seen chandeliers like this. A very special friend of mine, Joe, he's a photographer and besides being creative in that field, he's also creative in making weird and wonderful things. So that was the basis of the chandeliers. You will see there's three, and then I've just added on. One specific evening, I had a few colleagues and friends here, and we were having a lovely bottle of Sauvignon Blanc, and I couldn't stand the clutter anymore. So that's when I went into the cupboards and we just started hanging. And I painted it again, especially for top building this time, and I did the gold because I thought it's just a little bit more dramatic. I see you have quite a thing for customization. That's true. I've never thought about it, but I think in terms of the comfort of my guests. You know, I feel my guests must feel they can put their elbows on the table. They can actually talk loudly and have fun. The first thing I did when we bought the house was to build this massive fireplace. The great thing about it is it actually serves the kitchen and also the dining room. You can see through it and my friends know when it's winter we can even braai or do poiki in the fireplace. <laughs> Let's do it. From a late wedding work comes an ability to envision and transform spaces quickly to suggest a period and energy. It's an invaluable skill used in different ways for each room. I see why you spend so much time in this room. It's very airy and spacious. Airy, that's the correct word. And I think with the natural light coming through, you've got the very large window panel there, and then also the double doors, the French doors that I've put in here. So it is a small contrived space, but by use of monochromatic colors and your natural browns and khakis, and then the touch of green, I think it gives you a peaceful environment. Despite a late success, he works in an industry of impossible deadlines and late hours, where burnout is common. Central to his staying the course is not only his happy temperament, but the personal joy and meaning he's found in raising his daughter, Catalina. Alec, you've built such an amazing reputation for yourself. Where did it all start for you? I grew up in the countryside. My dad was a pastor and we moved around a lot. I wasn't used to the beautiful things that I'm used to now. Money wasn't freely available, and I made a deal with myself, a pack, and I said, I'll lay it one day. 
you are going to be successful. You are going to have more than enough to give, to give back to not only your own family, but also to other people, to empower other people, and also to educate. I've got education in my heart. Which experiences would you say have impacted your life? I believe we all have a little voice. And that little voice, some people call it a sixth sense, others give a religious connotation to it. But that little voice is what guides you. And listen to that voice. I always had that voice and I knew one day I'm going to have a Catalina. I knew that, I knew that she's already handpicked for me. And that is fantastic. I sometimes get emotional when I tell this story, but I mean, it's been nine years that she's in my life and she's just my superstar. And how weird is God's sense of humor? Me not being sporty and I get super athlete, super model child, and she's just great at everything she does. Catalina, when did you start running? I started running in grade one. My friends were, and uh, not all of them were running. Only some of them were running and I made new friends when I started athletics. So, how many records have you broken? My first record was the 80 meters. I haven't broken the 100 or 60 meters yet. What do you like most about running? I don't know. The fact that you're the best? Yes. <laughs> what advice would you give somebody who's considering adopting? It's the best thing ever, but it must come from the heart. There's so many great people out there that I think, and I know they will be great parents, and there's a lot of children, not only in South Africa, but all over the world, that craves for love and attention, and just to have that parent that loves you. I mean, for the first time in my life, after my career and my wonderful successes that I've been blessed with, when I got Catalina, I have a sense of belonging. I am rooted and now I understand what my life is about. And for those people out there that's considering it, it's the best ride ever. What would you say is the biggest lesson that she's taught you? Unconditional love. And what would you say is that one thing she gets from you? What she got from me is my smile. When there's a camera on her, it's a natural thing. Not today, but she feels it. She's like, and she smiles. And then also I think my love for life and for people. Thank you so much, you two, for welcoming me into your lovely home. I had such a wonderful time, and I can't wait to dig in. Let's do it. <laughs> for a wedding and events maestro who sets out every morning to create the happiest day in others' lives, it's heartwarming he's found so much joy in his own.